the first time running out of that tunnel. You can see the students leaning over the railing. They announce the Penn State Blue Band. I started trailing because of my sister. She had started when she was about nine years old as well, and she was in a Parks and Rec program back home. And I was a little brother that was always brought along to her competitions and would watch her get ready and watch her practice outside. And eventually I picked up the baton and was like, you know, this is going to be pretty cool. I did karate and different things when I was little. I played baseball and football. So it was a lot different for me. And me and my brother both played football. And my dad, he was our coach. So it, it was different for the family. And when I started twirling, they were hesitant at first, but I wanted to compete. And that first year when I went to nationals, I qualified for the world team. And that was my first experience. So at that point, I kind of had to choose, do I want to play football or do I want to twirl? And so I ended up twirling and here I am. There are thousands of people around the country who are doing baton twirling. In fact, our last three twirlers have all been world champions. Bobby Joe Solomon, PJ Meyerhofer, and now Matt Freeman. And there are a lot of younger kids who look up to these top baton twirlers who are in college. So it's quite an interesting phenomenon to see. I've been twirling for now nine years. And uh, in the beginning, my main goal was to twirl for a university. So I always thought just, I need to keep pushing through this. I need to twirl through uh, junior high, twirl through high school. I want to get to a major university. And so now that I'm here at Penn State, it's just, it's just such a great opportunity because I've waited so long for it. I mean, you know, I'm just living in the moment. This is just, this is where I want to be. And this is where I'm having like the time of my life. I was not aware of, of Matt until he applied to the university and expressed interest in our position. Then we did get a chance to see some things that were uh, online, I think, or YouTube, uh, you know, uh, demonstrations or performances that were online. So we've been very fortunate over the years that that the reputation of our band program, I think, has been appealing to. Uh, twirlers over the years who have been interested in that feature position, so we've been fortunate to have some really outstanding uh, feature twirlers audition and, and hold that position. Well, yeah, my favorite had to be the fireball. It was just awesome to see him bounce him off the ground, catch him, and just show it for Michigan. It was just like, wow, you know you can burn yourself pretty bad, and if you mess up, it's not pretty in front of the largest crowd but it was inspiring and really fired up the entire crowd. Probably asked him if he could teach me some of his moves. If I was approached in the gym and someone wanted to know how to twirl, I, I wouldn't have a problem with teaching somebody. I think that it's a, it's a great sport and I think that it needs to be, uh, everyone needs to know about it and that's one of the things that we try to do here is to try to make sure that across the nation people know what baton twirling is and they know what real twirlers are and that's what we represent here at Penn State. I'd ask what he sacrificed in high school and growing up in order to become what he is. The only thing that I think twirling has uh, required me to give up is a, a lot of free time because it's something that you have to constantly work at and constantly practice every day. There's been some times where I've had to be at home and practicing or at the gym and um, especially here at, at Penn State because there's a lot of things that go on during the weekends and Friday nights that I just have to um, you know, just be responsible and just make sure I'm practicing and keeping up on my grades and uh, because I'm in this position I just have to do a great job. I don't know, probably like something about dropping the baton and how he would handle it because, I don't know, as far as I know, he hasn't dropped one since he's been doing it. So I don't know how he would handle that and what he would do to prepare better after. 
If I were to drop on the field, I think that my first reaction would just to try to cover it up. Uh, there was one last game actually. Uh, it was really windy out, and uh, it was during pregame, and it went to the other side of me, and I. I caught it, but I ended up having to uh, do a roll on the ground and catch it because baton twirling is 90% mental and 10% physical. So I think a big aspect of it is just making sure that in my head I'm not thinking about the drop next time I go to attempt the trick, that I'm thinking about how many times I have caught it because I've practiced it so many times in practice and uh, when I'm in the gym that I know that I'm confident in tricks that I do on the field that I'm going to catch. So I just need to make sure that in my head I know that I can catch it. Well, I think Matt... Uh will create his own routines. Uh, some of what he does are things that we're familiar with, but uh, he is an immensely talented and he can do some moves that nobody else can do. He can twirl four batons and he is working on a five baton routine and I don't think anybody in the world does that. Uh, so he has some very unique abilities to uh, throw the baton several stories up in the air catch it behind his back without looking, do a couple of flips in between. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing and it requires a tremendous amount of athleticism. Well, specifically with the feature twirler, uh, when I chart a show, I try to, to keep in mind certain locations on the field that I think would be good for him to be at at that particular time in the, in the music. Now, what I'm often trying to do is to, is if possible, ensure that all parts of the stadium have an opportunity to kind of see him up close or as close as, as is possible in a big stadium. Well, of course I know Matt. Uh, he has already performed at a number of events that I've hosted, and I was actually at his audition, so I had a chance to meet him even before he was a student at Penn State. Uh, me and President Spanier, we have to get along a lot. Uh, I see him at the tailgates, and we kind of work with each other. He introduces me uh, to all the alumni and the people present at the tailgate, and I know that he's twirled with PJ in the past, and he wants to tour with me eventually next season, so uh, I just work with him a lot through twirling, and he's just a great uh, inspire for the university, so it's, it's just been great. I guess the only thing I would say is that we certainly I know that I appreciate, and I think I can speak for the students and the rest of the staff, in that we really appreciate the kind of support that we get at Penn State, that the band gets at Penn State. As this first season kind of comes to a close, and I think about how fast it went, it's just, it's amazing. And I've just had a great time here. And I think that part of my experience has to do with the students and how they react to my twirling. And of course, it was different with a guy coming in here after PJ and after Bobby Joe. So I just, I guess, want to thank all of the students because it's just been a great opportunity and it's been a great experience. And I can't wait to see what next year brings.